Everybody, how you doing? So, we're still stuck here with this COVID-19 issue. And uh, I've been really busy for the last couple of weeks. I'm an essential worker, so... You know, I do apologize for not getting the videos out, but hey, it just I just haven't had the time until really today. So, since I'm not allowed to go anywhere, because when I'm not working, I have to self-isolate, I thought I'd put my next video out on the Hard Bay compilation. This is a start of the Metal Lure series. And today I'm going to start with a very simple lure that everybody uh, knows about. Uh, it's, of course, the uh, Spoon Lure. Now, I did a video on this uh, a couple of years ago, but it was a bit hokey. Uh, but today I want to do this one, and especially to newcomers to the sport, so you have an idea of what a spoon lure is. Now, obviously, the name kind of gives it away. They were traditionally made from old tablespoons. Um, I just hope they have permission from the wife to do this. Uh, spoon lures have been around for over a hundred years. I believe that they started out, uh, they've got examples in some of these um, fishing museums, uh, the vintage lures that were made back in the late 1800s, and spoon lures were part of that. And, um, oh, anyway, so let's take a look at some of the photos, some of the illustrations I have and images I have here on the computer, and I can explain to you, you know, the construction and um, basically how they work. All right, so come on, let's go. So as I said before, uh, spoon lures got their name because they're made from spoons. They were initially, and here's a really good example of a homemade um, spoon uh, lure. As you can see, we've got the bowl of the spoon up here. And down here, they've also utilized the top of the handle of the spoon. And basically, uh, what they've done is they've punched a, a few holes in it. They've affixed a hook and uh, a place to um, attach your fishing line. Now, if we go to, uh, here's a more modern day version of the uh, spoon lure. Now these are classic spoon lures that I'm showing you here. If you ever buy a package of spoon lures, you can get them sometimes in four or five year classic spoon lures. I guarantee you, you will get the five of diamonds and the white on red or red on white. That It's guaranteed to get these in the package. Everybody who uses spoon lures will probably have these too. They come in a myriad of different designs, yes, but these are classic, these, this, these two designs right here. But let's take a look at um, how they're constructed. Obviously, these have been manufactured uh, they're not actually spoons, but as you can see, we've got the split ring down the end here with a treble hook affixed. And then up the end here, we either will have just the um, hole to affix the line, or sometimes there will be a split ring in here as well. Uh, but either way, you can either hard line or use a, a snap swivel in this area to affix the uh, lure to the line. So usually they are painted on one side and on the uh, uh, concave side they're usually blank. They're probably silver or some painting but they won't have the designs that you see on the on the top here. So these are your just classic examples of a, a spoon lure. Now let me show you another version of a, a spoon lure. Um, this is called a weedless spoon. Here we go. Now, the weedless spoon lure, as you can see, is a slightly different uh, construction. It has that uh, spoon base um, shape to it, but it has like this little piece of metal, like um, a pin that runs down the back of the lure. This helps when the lure is being trolled through weeds. And it usually will have um, one hook on it as well and not a treble hook. This stops uh, the, the lure from snagging, okay? So that is a weedless spoon lure. And um, let's go up to... Now here we have here... This is a good one. Uh, this is a spoon handle lure. As you see, they've taken the bowl of the spoon off and they've just used the handle. And they've taken a router and they've... Um, Cut a few lines in here, roughed it up a bit, added an eye down here. Here we have the um, the where you fix your line. Back down here we've got the split ring for the uh, trebles. So you can switch out your uh, hooks on a spoon lure. If you want to go to a single, you can do a single. If you want to go double, because they're on those little split rings that you can um, you can remove the treble. But usually they will come with trebles or you can buy them of course with a single one. Now if you're going to switch out the hooks on the lure, um, 
you need to remember to try and keep the hook uh, at the same size. Uh, if it's a size 6 hook, keep it with a size 6. Don't go too big because that will affect how the lure perform, performs in the water, okay? So try and keep your hooks. If you're switching from a, a treble to a single and it's a size 6 treble, you want to keep it to a size 6 single hook or a size 6 uh, double. Don't go too big because it will affect how the, flow, uh, the lure uh, swims in the water, its swim pattern. Now, swim patterns, while we're on that subject of spoons, are they flutter when they're in the water. They kind of flutter as, they, as they're being trolled or retrieved. Or you can also jig spoons as well. You can get jigging spoons. They're a little bit heavier, but they can also be vertically jigged as well as trolled and cast and retrieved. They will flutter in the water. And this is part of their attraction, the light flashing. It's, it just emulates a fish darting about or a fish in distress, okay? Now, sometimes you can get them with little plastic spinners by the... Um, the treble hooks or with a little bit of skirt on. This again is also part of the attraction uh, of the lure. You can also tip the hooks with bait if you want as well. So you can put worm fragments on there. Some of them put curly jig worms on. Uh, whatever. Whatever you want to use uh, to help you catch fish you can you can do with the, uh, the spoon. It's actually a very versatile uh, lure. But you know they're um, expense-wise, uh, cost-wise it depends. They start about a couple of dollars a piece and they can go right up uh, depending on their size. They're in various sizes, of course. They're from quite, you know, size of the tip of your finger to the size of the palm of your hand, depending on what you're fishing for. Now, uh, they're very good for um, pike fishing. Pike anglers love using spoon lures and pikes like them too. They're also really good for uh, trout fishing. I know that um, rainbow trout go nuts over them. Uh, there's a sound that's made by the lure when it's vibrating in the water. It just happens to drive rainbow trout nuts. So they're very prized by uh, pike anglers and um, trout fishermen. But you can use them for bass fishing. And you can also use the small ones for, for pan fishing as well. Uh, they'll work on basically any species. Okay, so how do I attach, how do you attach your spoon loop to your line? Well, as I mentioned, there is a line, uh, there is a hole for the, um, the line to go through. Sometimes it will have a split ring. Um, so you can either hard line the lure to the line, just tie it straight on, or use a snap swivel, uh, which you just kind of clip it on and off. Um, sometimes the snap swivel is a little bit better to use, especially if you're using a, a spinning setup because of the twist in the line. Okay, the, the lure will uh, swim a little bit more naturally and it also doesn't add to the twist of the line because it's, it's rotating around the swivel head. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Again, that's entirely up to you how you want to set it up, alright? And if it works for you, hey, that's great. All right, that's just a, a kind of short and dirty version of the spoon lures. So basically, yeah, they were originally made of spoons. You can still make them. I might be doing that later on, too, if this doesn't stop. Make some of my own spoon lures. I've done it before, and um, I gave them away to a couple of friends of mine, but I think I might be doing it again just to keep me busy. Yeah. So until our next video, I'm not sure which one it's going to be, but it'll be in the metal lure compilation. Uh, I'm not sure which one I want to do. There's a couple of them. I uh, just want to say thanks for, you know, hang in there, guys. Hopefully our fishing season will be salvaged and we'll be able to go out and, have, you know, just get out there and enjoy ourselves. And uh, so in the meantime, please stay safe, stay well, and stay at home. All right? Thank you. Bye-bye for now.